Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1423, maximum points you can obtain from cards. I just want to say that there's a lot of solutions to this that use dynamic programming, but if you've watched this channel before, you know that I think dynamic programming is absolute bullshit and I don't solve dynamic pro programming questions. So we're actually going to be solving it a different way. If you're looking for the dynamic programming solution, click off now because you're not going to find it here. Anyway, let's read the question prompt. There are several cards arranged in a row, and each card has an associated number of points. The points are given in the integer array card points. In one step, you can take one card from the beginning or one card from the end of the row. You have exactly k cards. Your score is the sum of the points of the cards you have taken. Given the integer array card points in the integer k, return the maximum score you can obtain. Cool. So let's look at an example here. We have card points, which is this array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, and k equals 3. So we want to maximize the amount of cards we can take. So we know that we have to take one from the beginning or the end at each pick. Here, they're both 1, but we need to be careful because the next pick that we have available to us will matter here. So we can take from the left or the right. It doesn't matter. At this point, it'll be optimized. But we can see that if we take from the right, then the next card we can pick from is a 6. If we took from the left, the next card we could pick is a 2, which is smaller than the 6. So we want to take from the right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 1, and we're going to you know, basically get rid of this 1 so it's no longer available. So now we choose again. We can either take a 1 or we can take a 6. Obviously, 6 is bigger, so we're going to take it. And then we need to pick again, right? We need one more pick, so obviously we have a choice of 5 or 1. 5 is going to win there, so our total answer is going to be 12, which is the solution to this question. Now, it's really easy to look at this question and figure it out, you know, just staring at it, because you can basically just figure it out in your head. But we need to write some sort of algorithm to do this for us. Now, what we could do, and we're not going to do this because it's not efficient, is basically we're going to, we could uh, do the naive solution, which is basically figure out all the possible combinations, right? So we could do one, two, three, which is where we pick from there. We could pick the one from the left, then we pick the one from the right, and then the six, and then we could pick one, two, and then maybe the one, on and on and on, and then we just take the maximum of whatever those are, and we simply pick uh, whatever the max is, and that's our answer. But obviously that's not efficient, because we have to build all these possible solutions, and what happens when k actually equals to basically the uh, the length of the array minus one, then it's going to be a huge amount of these that we have to build and that's not efficient. Uh, and you won't pass the interview if you do that. So we need to do it in a bit of a smarter way. And that's where the more optimal solution is. So let's take a step back and think about how we might implement that. Okay. Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about the actual optimal solution. So I told you that we're not going to solve this using dynamic programming because I hate dynamic programming. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a sliding window solution instead. And what we want to do for the sliding window is let's think about it. Let's say our initial window would be if we took everything from the left, right? So our answer here uh, would be one two, three, which is going to be six, right? But remember from earlier, our best solution is 12. So we know that this one isn't it. But it could be because obviously we're going to calculate it as we go. Now, what should our new sliding window be after we've evaluated this? <clears throat> obviously, we can't move to the right because there's no way for us to form this, right? There's no way for us to do this because that means that we would have to take the one first, right? That would mean we need four elements, and that's not possible. So we're not going to be moving our sliding window to the right. We're going to kind of think of this array as being circular. So now, Remember we had one, two, three. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move stuff to the left. So we're gonna pretend now that we took the first two from the left, and then we also took the first one from the, the right. So that means that we're gonna have an answer of one plus one plus one. So this is going to be what? Four, right? So our previous answer was six. So let's just leave them all out here. One, two, three. Uh, and then you know, we had six. So obviously this answer isn't better. So now we can keep going because we can keep moving to the left because now we still have you know three elements. So now in this time, we're going to pretend that we took one from the right. And this time our boundary is going to move to the left from the right side because we're kind of pretending it's a circular array. And we'll have one plus six plus one. So this is going to be eight, which is our new best answer. So we would update that in you know, some variable keeping track of our solution. And now we still have the, I guess, other case where we just take all from the right. So let's evaluate that. 
and we will take everything from the right this time and we'll get five plus six plus one apologies for the sirens in the background uh, and we'll get 12 which is our answer right from before and at this point we can't actually move our sliding window anymore right we can't go uh, four five six because we would have to take the one first and then to do that would mean that we use four but obviously we only have three so that's what we want to do we want to set our initial kind of solution to be bounded you know the left end point is going to be this start here and the right is going to be whatever k is i guess k minus one in this case because we're zero index and what we're going to do is we're going to move the left to the left and we're going to move the right to the left as well and we can kind of pretend that it's a circular array so we'll basically just loop back around and then we'll try it in basically we're going to go from you know minus k to k uh, in the range because that will give us the amount of values that we can actually build here and that will be our solution whatever the maximum is uh, whenever we build these sliding windows, then that's going to be what our solution is. So let's go to the code editor and write this up. We are in the code editor. Let's write this up. So we need some variables to basically keep track of our solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these up. So let's say we have an answer variable and we're going to need a current variable, which is going to represent the sum of our current sliding window. We obviously don't want to be resumming everything every single time. We want to use the previous result and then simply subtract from it and then add to it the new values and then get rid of the last value. So we're going to set these both equal to zero because obviously we haven't done anything yet. Now, remember, we need to build our sliding window, which is going to go from minus K to K. So let's think about this. If K is minus three, oh, sorry, if three, uh, if K is three, then what is our sliding window going to be, right? So we're going to start from, we're going to say 4i in range minus k up until k. So let's think about that when we first start. So i will initially start at what? Minus 3, right? And what is, what are we going to do here? So we want to sum the value at minus 3. So minus 3 from the end will be this 5. So that is going to be you know, the first number we use for our calculation. And then because we don't actually have enough elements at this point to form our full uh, window yet, we basically can kind of just ignore it and move forward, right? Once K or this I here is now greater than or equal to zero, what happens in that case? That means that we've gone from minus three to minus one minus two to minus one which is our three variables and then when we hit zero that means that we hit a fourth one now we need to start getting rid of elements because our sliding window is too big until we hit the point where it's zero for the range that at that point we can just add stuff because the sliding window isn't fully formed yet right it's not of size k it's still less than so we can just keep taking the elements and we don't have to actually worry about getting rid of them but once we start getting to zero, then we need to subtract elements, right? So we now we need to get rid of, you know, once we, we want this sliding window, we need to get rid of this first value. So let's set that up in the code. And what is that going to look like? So we have our for loop here, and we're going to take the current value, which is going to be whatever card points of i is. So we're going to take whatever the current index is. Now, remember, we need that check to make sure our sliding window doesn't actually go above size k. So we're going to say if i is actually greater than or equal to zero, that means that we've taken our k points. And now we need to actually get rid of the first one we took. So we're going to say current. We're going to get rid of that first value that we took, card points. So this is going to be i minus k. That's going to represent that first value that we took. And at this point, whoops, we can simply update our solution. So we're going to say answer is going to be whatever the maximum is of our current window and whatever the current answer is. And now at the end, all we need to do is simply return our answer and we are good to go. So let's submit this or let me just make sure I haven't made any syntax errors. Cool. We haven't submit this and it runs perfectly. Okay. So what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm? So the time complexity, obviously we are, you know, bound by the size of our K, right? So that's the sliding window we have to make and how many um, basically iterations we have to do. So our time complexity is going to be based on how large the sliding window is. So that's why it's O of K. 
And space complexity wise, we don't actually define any variables here except for the two to just store our answer in the current, uh, but those are constant space allocations. So that's gonna be big O of one. That's how you solve this problem using a sliding window. Like I said, I hate dynamic programming. I don't wanna solve this one with dynamic programming. I wanna solve it using something else. And I think the solution is pretty straightforward. I think this part might be a little bit confusing, but what I would recommend for you to do is just go through the array, <clears throat> you know, index by index through this for loop and basically see what the values are and see how it removes elements once we hit, you know, I greater than or equal to zero. And that should help you kind of formulate it and you'll see how we actually converge to the final solution. Obviously, that's something that you can do on your own. I'm just going to give you the solution here, walk you through it, but I'm not actually going to draw it out line by line. Although, I mean, some, in an interview, you'd want to do that. But in this case, you just want to see the solution and get on with your uh, studying. So I'm going to cut it there. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want more videos like this to help you prepare for your on-site interviews, subscribe to the channel. I have a ton of videos on my channel already, and I plan to make a whole lot more. So subscribe so you don't miss those uploads. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.